something sexy. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 97 of Kitty Liquor. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. I'm your host, Cat Wonders. And I always wear one of these on my freaking wrist. And I don't know what's going to happen to me in 10 years from now, but the circulation to my right hand has always been cut off from my damn hair elastic. Um, episode 97. Three more to go before it's episode 100. What are we going to do to celebrate? Any ideas? <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be typical and get like balloons that say 100k okay no 100 <laughs> 100 episodes a milestone but not at the same time <laughs> I've been having so much fun doing this and it's actually part of like it's become part of who I am and I was thinking today I was going to mention like again this is unstructured and this is like off the cuff I don't have a script in front of me like not even one I even remembered what episode it was that's a lie because I had to check my phone but I'm just I'm feeling it it's become part of who I am and I'm excited about it and I feel like it almost takes that many episodes this many episodes to kind of get to the point where you could just sit down in front of the camera and just start talking. When I first started my channel, I forget so hot right now, by the way. When I first started my channel, can you guys see my nipples? If you can, then congratulations. I was really structured when I first started. I 100% had like thought about it two days before, wrote down everything I wanted to talk about. So I just, I wasn't stuck or like stumped on any topic or anything like that. <laughs> Watch me put my foot in my mouth and just run out of things to talk about. Um, well, that concludes episode, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> so it is hot as hell right now. It's uh, probably 27 degrees and I am sweating to death but it, I'm loving it so recently I had my sprinklers turned back on so at like 9 30 every morning they come on and it's just like the sun is coming above the mountains it is becoming summertime we are having a heat spell over the next week or two weeks which is a little bit scary because we really had a dry winter, meaning we had not a lot of snow. The snow came late and the, the duration was really short, but skiers and people that come from out of the country and plan their Canadian vacation like it's their dream um, must have been pretty disappointed because the skiing was skinny as hell, which means it was um, rocks, trees, boulders sticking out and not safe <laughs> to ski at all. If you wipe out, you're probably going to catch a, an edge of something and then be ripped to shreds. So it was a little bit shitty. Um, and then the, what's his name? The groundhog saw his shadow. So we had six more weeks of winter. Definitely true. Now it's like spring has hit. I mean, it feels like summer and it's almost 30 degrees Celsius every day. I don't know what to make of it. My body is kind of in shock. I have fake tan on and also a real tan. What's real? What's fake now? I can't. The lines are blurred. Uh, I feel like it's July weather in May, the beginning of May. And congratulations to everybody. We made it to May. Woo. I'm telling you, it's the hottest May I can remember. So let's make a cocktail. This is going to be <laughs> a mishmash like you've never seen. I don't have a recipe. I just thought in my head that these actually might work together or maybe not. Also, shout out to my citrus outfit because we are making a very citrusy. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> Pineapple isn't citrus, is it? It kind of like falls under the same category in my mind because it's tart and sour and kind of like the texture almost is almost like if you're biting into a soft or, or a firm mm, grapefruit 
So these are my ingredients. Can you see them already? I found this, this must be new. I've never seen this before. This is a diet cran pineapple. I've not opened this. Can you tell? And next we have Altos tequila. Tequila is one of my favorite alcohols. People call it, it's not an alcohol, it's like a drug. I believe it because sometimes, excuse me, when I drink tequila, if I'm like down in Mexico, I can go all day, all night, and I'm feeling great. <laughs> Whereas if I were to be drinking like vodka or gin or something, it'd be a different story. Then I've got some sparkling wine. This is a Prosecco, a product of Italy. And what's gonna happen? We have Prosecco, we have tequila, we have pineapple cranberry juice, and a glass full of ice. This time, I've chosen all of my accessories to be the color green. I've got a straw, a cocktail mixer with a tiny baby spoon at the bottom that is a cactus. I've got a pineapple tree, <laughs> a palm tree, uh, umbrella, which I'm gonna open right now. These are the best, by the way. If you want the best cocktail accessories, go to Amazon. Oh yeah, this is to keep the umbrella up. It's kind of a little bit, I guess that, that's all you need. Then, this is actually like a bottle of white wine. It kind of reminded me of tequila and it's green. So we're gonna go with this. <sighs> Let me just take all this out and use the cocktail stirrer to stir the cocktail. We want to do the sparkling last. So let's start with, oh yeah, was I talking about my earrings, my outfit? Um, these are either oranges or grapefruits and depending on what you want to believe. <laughs> I believe they're, they're definitely orange, more orange slice. Um, love them. Okay, tequila. Let's do one ounce. Who am I kidding? Actually, yeah, like about one and a half ounces of tequila. That must have been so bad for you, I'm so sorry. Then, so, oh no, not champagne yet. Then some of this cranberry pineapple juice. This is diet, by the way, so there's way less sugar, but I feel like it's replaced with sucralose. Anyway, per one cup, there's three grams of carbohydrates, so, and 10 calories, no sugar. Here we go. Oh my God, you guys. It smells like cheese whiz. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, please. If you find this in your grocery store, I'm sure it's gonna taste great, but. Did I say it tastes like cheese whiz? It smells like cheese whiz. Did I say tastes? Do you ever do that when you like have a conversation with somebody and then you realize later what, that you said pants instead of shirt or something? This smells like cheese whiz. Weird, okay, so let's add some of this. Beautiful color, by the way. Then we're gonna add some champagne, and, or sorry, Prosecco. This was opened two nights ago. I had some Dutch friends over and we didn't quite finish it, can you believe it? We're gonna top it off with some Prosecco here. So we have three extremely different flavors. Tequila, pineapple cranberry juice, and sparkling wine, Prosecco. Let's give it a little stir. Then I remembered a straw. And let's just Add our little wilting palm tree. It's fine, it's still beautiful and green. And the green contrast with my outfit. And this might just 
complete my citrus dreams. Whoa. This is like, what does this remind me of? Not cheese whiz. <laughs> It kind of tastes like a margarita with a bit more of like a, a berry twist on it, even though there's no berries, but cran pineapple. Interesting. I don't taste the champagne. It could be floating on the top. I keep calling it champagne, you guys. I'm sorry. Prosecco. Interesting. I wouldn't say that it's like the best cocktail I've ever had, but it is what it is. Like... If it was just the Cran Pineapple with the Prosecco, but throw the tequila in there. There is something happening in my mouth. <laughs> That's good. Has this cocktail been made before? I'm sure it has. <laughs> Me just inventing things. Love it. I think that and it looks pretty too. So, like I said, the weather, holy shit, crazy. Uh, you know, when you, it's the dead of winter and you're fantasizing about summertime. I'm in the zone now where my fantasy is coming true, but because I've been spending so much time in the sun, I can't bear to lay in the hot sun anymore. My deck is surrounded by glass panels uh, so you can see the view, but there's no, you know, anyway, so it blocks the wind, the breeze, which I need to lay on the deck. So I've had to plug in my fan, my handy dandy fan and uh, make a fake breeze so that I can survive because I feel like the temperature outside might be 27, but on the deck with no breeze. And then I have kind of darker furniture. It's like emitting heat as well. It's like, you know, when you're going for a walk in the wilderness as opposed to on the black concrete it's there's a temperature difference so <laughs> so on my deck it's probably like 35 or so it feels like but hey i you know i haven't really had much of an adjustment period it kind of went from zero to 60 more like you know 10 to 30 <laughs> uh and but it's okay the motivation that the sun brings me and the beautiful weather outside brings me is perfection. I worked out this morning again. So, okay. Oh my God. I signed up for Pilates bar classes. So Pilates, I'm sure you've all heard of Pilates, but bar, B-A-R-R-E, is like exercise that pulls a lot from ballet and lengthening and gracefulness and I went to my first class last Tuesday. Today was supposed to be my second class. And it was fine. It was like, it was okay. The class size is about 12 people. And I didn't know what to expect because I haven't actually joined like an exercise class in many, many years. But because I've been so into fitness and I like have a bit more confidence with my strength and things like that, I decided to sign up for something a little bit different, right? So because I'm doing spin, I'm on my bike every day and then doing like some core or booty exercises for 20 minutes. So I was like, okay, at least I'm going to throw in something a bit different where I'm doing more stretching and whatever. It was all mat work and then a little bit on the bar. So like the class has a bar that goes from end to end. And then there's a point in the exercise where you go and hang onto the bar and do certain like plies and exercises that are more about like combining stretching and strength, right? So the teacher, to be honest, adorable, so great. Uh, I'm, I'm in there with ladies that are between the age of like 55 and 65. There was one other really hot blonde that was in there, but it was kind of like I was in the back of the class, uh, which is where I prefer to be <laughs> because when you're trying something new, you don't want to be like, have everybody looking at you. <laughs> and my coordination has always been off. So, you know, if the teacher is doing something this way, I'm kind of like, what the, and so I don't want to throw anybody off. So back to the class. Great. The problem is, is that when we moved to some bar movements, she 
changed the end of the class. So she was teaching from this end where, so that I was then at the front. Anyway, it was fine. Um, but then I realized that what I'm doing already at home is 100% like more than what I got from the class. Now, it has nothing to do with the teacher. It was it's like she is doing a fine job. But I guess I didn't realize how intense my home workouts were until I went there. So, and I paid, <laughs> I paid for two weeks, or sorry, two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays in the morning and Thursdays in the evening. Thursdays in the evening doesn't work. <laughs> I had to skip two. And today I skipped my morning class because I had meetings um, at 10. So if I start at nine, I'm not going to be done in time. So I just thought, well, fuck it. I'll just like, get up and like do my workout um, earlier and then skip the class or whatever. But now I'm like, what do I do? I don't want to go to these classes because I know I can do better for myself at home. I, there are some movements and things like that that I can't do. But I guess, you know what I thought? I thought that the class would offer some equipment or something. So I have a friend that does Pilates bar um, also locally. And I don't know. I thought that maybe it was the same person. And there are these machines called, I think they're called reformers that are designed for resistance. So... It's different than lifting weights or have resistance bands. It's like completely. So I thought, I guess I, I just was, I just was confused about what the classes were offering. And I think I'm going to try to get my money back. <laughs> I feel bad too. And you know what, to be honest, if I can't get my money back, the, the teacher is so sweet and just so like, innocent and sweet and I if I if I don't get my money back it's fine um maybe I'll show up the odd time <laughs> depending on how I'm feeling but have you ever signed up for something that you are like this just isn't for me and let me just reiterate too it has nothing to do with her I just was expecting something like it was my expectation that was that was false um so have you ever signed up for something where you're like actually I don't know what do I think about this? And then you're like, eh, I think I'll just not show up, <laughs> uh, which is, it makes no difference to them. You know, like the fewer the people, to be honest, the better. Um, but I just feel a little bit bad because I'm like, I really just, it's, it's a me problem, not a them problem. So, um, but I finished today, I finished a series. What is her name? You know what I find? I find that when I focus too hard on remembering something, it, it's like a block. It doesn't like if I if I'm just oh yeah so and so and I I'm not thinking about it too hard. I can remember, but if when I'm like, what is her name? And then I I enter the zone of like brainlessness where I just suddenly cannot remember anybody's name or anything. <laughs> um, Christy Clark. <laughs> Anyway, she's an iFit trainer. I, did, I finished her series, 15 workouts. Um, so good. And and just a real like drill sergeant type coach, instructor. So I, I told you before in previous podcasts about Nicole Moline, how she's like a very wholesome yoga, hippie instructor, very gentle, very like, she'll remind you of like, to be aware of your feelings and things. Like that. But this new trainer, um, what is her name? Anyway, she's super drill sergeant, like total opposite. And when she counts down, she's like, instead of like three, two, one, she's like three, two, one. And like, so just loves what she's doing, feels it, portrays whatever she wants to portray. Um, I'm telling you, it worked for me too. <laughs> I'm in love with both of these trainers. No, actually, she's uh, very, um, when I say drill sergeant, I mean like very kind of focused and really good at what she does and, and almost more motivating than like a nurturing coach. Somebody who's like, make sure you protect your back. Uh, be sure that you're breathing and exhaling and 
this this other trainer is like when we're doing because we do upper body as well because my nordic track um s71 <laughs> don't don't ask me to remember but um it comes with weights three pound weights so then she's really like coaching you and and telling you like you don't feel it do you no you don't and then she's like saying um what what else does she do She's like, oh yeah, you should be able to maintain this for an hours and hours. And then you're just like dying and you're like, yeah, I think I could do it anyway. But it, there's something to be said about both. It kind of reminds me of like parents who either are nurturing and very like conscious about your feelings and very kind of like they adapt to sort of your like how you feel and how you learn. And then there's other parents that are like strict, stern, nope. This is how I was raised. This is how we're going to do it. There is like value in both of these things. And that's where having like a mother and a father or whatever your parent structure may have been to have both parents to be one way or the other. I think the value and the, the goal would be to kind of like have, and that's where opposites attract, right? You hear stories of people that are totally opposite, but the, you know, it's good to have both. And I learned this on my spin cycle. <laughs> Um, I learned from my coaches, like, you can, you can um, benefit from both and learn from both. And uh, you may prefer one over the other. But for me, I'm kind of confused. I don't really know what I like better. Do I like to be yelled at? And do I like to be told that this is what you're going to do? And Or do I like to be kind of finessed and like somebody who's you know, coaching me through gently and both are great, but I almost feel like I'm leaning more towards like the hard ass boot camp bitch <laughs> that's telling me, you don't feel it. Okay. One, two, three. Like it's also kind of, and she's of course beautiful and ripped and all these things. So like very motivating just visually as well. But, um, yeah, I think, um, you got to try them all. You can't just choose, pick and choose who you think is best for you because you're comfortable with it. You have to allow some newer, different stuff to know what you really need and what you like. And anyway, that tangent. Woo. Oh man, the birds. So... I have swallows um, surrounding my house at all times, which is great because swallows uh, eat bugs and mosquitoes. So the more swallows you have around your yard, the better. Swallows are birds, by the way. <laughs> um, anyway, so they're trying, they're trying to find places to nest. I've got little swallow houses or bird houses, small holes. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. Um, around my property and there it's so funny because I watched them last year I don't think we had one nesting uh swallow pair N none even though like I've provided the houses and the structure and but they're so picky and anyway um right now they're all searching for like little houses and I'm like every time I see a swallow couple or pair fly up to one of the houses I put up I'm like and then they just look at it and then fly away and I'm like no <laughs> that's where you want to live <laughs> please I need less mosquitoes and also like just having swallows around or just just birds in general I love little birds and um I'm hopeful uh, what was I gonna say I had something hit my mind and I um don't remember typical so oh I uh, Speaking of mosquitoes, my, suddenly my right foot started to feel a bit strange. I think I'm getting a delivery. Can you hear that? Uh, and didn't think much of it. Just walking around, doing my normal thing. And uh, I had some pain in the, in the on the heel of my right foot on the right side. So kind of on the outside of my right heel. And then I'm like, it's getting worse and worse. And I thought, oh, I must have been wearing something that irritated my 
heel or like a pair of shoes and I couldn't think of anything. And then I look at the bottom of my foot and I see that there are like three really red spots. So immediately I'm like, did I step on something? Is it glass? Is it metal? Like what the frick was I walking? Like, you know, sometimes you injure yourself and you have no idea how you did it. Like you have a huge bruise somewhere and you're like, what the fuck? And it's not like drunken nights. I was like, what the hell is going on? And I'm feeling around. And anyway, I do believe that I have three mosquito bites on the bottom of my foot. And the bottom of my feet is like never an area that I would, that I think I've ever had a mosquito bite. But in the springtime, mosquito bites are always worse because they're, your body is not used to the poison. So I determined that in my sleep, a couple of mosquitoes must have gotten their fix from my feet. Um, and I, I have a problem because it's not like I don't have anything embedded or like I didn't step on something. I would remember if I was like running across the rocks and had bruises on my feet. So um, yeah, mosquitoes. What the frick? Okay, so I saw this TikTok or video or something on... Um, remembering to take your medication and how many people struggle to remember if they've taken their medication that day or not and how big of a problem this poses on people's schedules and dosages and things like that where because I've had if like being on birth control I've had like moments where I cannot remember the last time I took it but say I'm taking it on a daily basis and then it gets to the point where I set an alarm, set an alarm for my pill. So I go to take my pill, take it. But then because I do it on a daily basis, I don't remember if I'm remembering the t like taking it today or taking it yesterday. I'm like, did I take my medication? So is it considered medication birth control? Anyway, so I discovered that there's uh, something called a a pill timer and I think if you type it in google pill timer you go go on amazon type in pill timer and basically the way that it works is the cap it's it's like a pill bottle with a cap you unscrew the cap every time you unscrew the cap it stops the timer every time you screw the cap on it restarts the timer so you honestly basically it, it reminds you of the last time you opened the cap. So you don't ever have to worry about, oh, did I take my medication? Because the last time you opened the cap, it restarted the timer. So if it says 24 hours, then you didn't take it or you took it. The last time you took it was the yesterday. <laughs> that was hard. Um, and, uh, and then when you screw the cap on, it restarts the timer. So if you're worried about if you took your medication or not, it will just tell you when the last time you open it was and if it was two days ago then you forgot to take your medication <laughs> but if it's one day ago then you're good to go so I just thought that might be helpful for some of you that like need to make sure you take your medication every day but you can't remember if you did or not and one another technique that works for me is um is to think of a number a number of the alphabet <laughs> think of a letter of the alphabet and Say it out loud. H. H is for helicopters that hate you. <laughs> and then you take your pill. And it's a way to remember that you took your pill. So you're actually doing something besides just opening something, taking your pill. You say something physically, like say it and then um, kind of make it work that way. Hopefully. I mean, for me, that's how my memory works. I can't. If, if I was interrogated by the police and they're like, where were you last Sunday? Uh, I'd be like, I guess I'm going to jail. Take me in because I cannot remember for the life of me. Um, so recently I uh, had a friend ask me for a recipe. So I make this cabbage roll soup. I think I've talked about it before. But essentially it's like a cabbage roll um, that's deconstructed into a soup. Now, I know a lot of people don't know what cabbage rolls are or do not 
like cabbage rolls, but the way that I grew up and the way that my mom made them, I think a lot of times there's rice in them. And I, I think like back in the day, she used to put rice in them too, but later on she just used beef, like spiced beef and, and tomato sauce, of course, and the cabbage, but uh, which I liked a lot better for whatever reason. So I made the soup and basically it's like a hamburger soup recipe from companies coming. <laughs> Um, but I add cabbage, lentils, uh, and cabbage, lentils, what's the other big one? I think it's more that I don't add like carrots and potatoes. So cabbage, lentils, and then the recipe itself. And I had a friend request this recipe because she's like, oh man, this was like one of the best soups I ever had. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I do make soup a lot because it's kind of like... You put effort into a meal and then you get like three or four meals out of it. So depending on if you freeze it or how many people you're serving, of course. And um, I was writing down the recipe. And I'm like, <laughs> I wrote the whole recipe down, took a photo of it, sent it to my friend and realized that I completely forgot the cabbage. And I was like, is it just my brain? Is it me? What's going on? <laughs> but uh, it was also a really hot day when I made that soup too. And I was like... Sorry, I've been so distracted by like people coming in and out of my house and I need to kind of be there. <laughs> I actually have um, some people going over some details that just showed up that I was not expecting details for my shop. Uh, sorry, my garage and my studio. I hate to do this, but I might have to dip because... I'm paying for them to be here. <laughs> they weren't supposed to be here till for another hour, but they're here early apparently. Yikes. Well, um, okay. So maybe what I'll do is make up for this time next week with my episode number 98. And, oh, I hate to do this. Okay, well, I'm going to make up for it somehow, some way, somehow. Thank you for watching my short ass podcast. Um, I have to go deal with some stuff, but um, please subscribe <laughs> if you want more shitty ass podcasts like this. No, I'm just joking. Any, any podcast is a good podcast. It's not as long as I'd like it to be. And I have a few other things to talk about, but I just can't right now. So um, like this video if you enjoyed it, please. Also, my podcasts are on Spotify and other platforms. So there's an audio version. And those of you listening to this audio version, please check out my video version on YouTube. So all right, everyone, that concludes this episode. Uh, like I said, apologies for cutting it short, but I got to go just deal with some shit and I'll be back soon one day uh with the next episode and uh, stay tuned for my next video <laughs> <laughs>